Here we present our work in Cairo University Pediatric Hospital, thoracoscopic primary procedure trachypexy and also geriatric patients. That it was believed that up to one third of the esophageal atresia with tracheosophageal fistula patients could have trachomalacia. However, recent reports suggest that it could be encountered in up to 80% of this population. In this study, we aim to study the possible benefits of trachypexy in patients with esophageal atresia with concomitant moderate to severe trachomalacia. This study was conducted in our institute from 2019 to 2022. We included type C atresia diagnosed with moderate to severe trachomalacia by immediate preoperative bronchoscopy. All the patients were fit for thoracoscopic intervention. Therefore, any unfit patients were excluded. Assessment of the trachomalacia was performed by immediate preoperative rigid bronchoscope. The airway assessment was performed in two phases of breathing, the spontaneous breathing and while applying a valsalva maneuver or applying negative pressure. The focal cords were assessed as well as the subglottic area, the position of the tracheosophageal fistula, and the tracheomalacia was assessed by the posterior membrane ratio to the whole circumference, the cartilage shape, and the collapse. Then thoracoscopic primary repair and posterior trachypexy was performed. During the study period, 24 patients met the inclusion criteria. The procedure was completed thoracoscopically in 22 patients. The mean operative time was 118 minutes and the mean trachypexy time was 15 minutes. 17 patients were discharged alive with the median post-operative hospital stays of 9 days. 6 patients developed anastomotic leak. Due to the early demise of 7 patients, 17 patients were followed up with mean follow-up period of 26 months. Only 7 patients developed symptoms in the form of cough and choking and difficulty in swallowing. The symptoms were analyzed by esophagogram, esophagoscopy, and bronchoscopy if needed. Symptoms of in five patients were due to anastomotic stricture and improved after dilatation. Two patients had symptoms due to the development of recurrent tracheosophageal fistula. Additionally, trachomalacia was still present in one of these patients. However, the remaining patients were considered to have successful trachypexy. The main limitation of this study is the small number of patients as well as the short follow-up period. We believe that attention given to the trachea by surgeons definitely improved the quality of life of these patients. Preoperative determination of the need of trachypexy not only may alleviate the chronic respiratory conditions but may also decrease the risk of surgical reintervention.